when did you notice the the emergent culture start to develop? And because I think you're you're a little bit older than I am, so. Yeah. Okay. So, like, you mean this particular iteration of the so-called culture war, like, like the whole idea of like um, redefining racism and sexism and stuff like that. I think that's happened over the past few years. I think. Yeah. Uh, Robin D'Angelo, even Max Kendi. I think those are people that have made an attempt to redefine language. I had a conversation earlier this week with a friend, Tyler Latwila. I think I'll end up maybe putting this out before that, but we had a discussion about that and the importance of language and not only in the sense of the description or its availability in syntax, but also the emotional weight that comes along with a word. And so the way that I described it to him was when someone calls you racist for a microaggression, it's, it's this word, it's this term racism is this big umbrella. And on the one side you have Jim Crow redlining lynching. And on the other side you have telling someone that you like their hair. And yeah, I don't think that the, well, I don't think that the emotional weight of racism has changed, but I think that redefining it is a, it's, it's a sleight of hand trick, which freaks me out because it just absolutely shuts down any conversation. If I get called a racist, I'm internal, shoulders forward like yes sir no sir three bags full sir. Mm. so it's almost like being called a word while you're in a field to 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 do your slavery work yeah okay um uh, what is it i mean you can't draw this direct compare level when people are like it's not inconvenient to wear a mask or whatever it's, it's not inconvenient to sit on the back of a bus it's not inconvenient it's not something i want to do and you're going to have to kill me to <laughs> to make me do it. I, I actually wear a mask like when I go to an old folks home or somewhere that's, you know, not voluntary, essentially. Anyway, so that's a side note. You could even edit that out if you're... No, that's fine. If your I'll, viewers I'll are it, it, might be a, it might be a false equivalency, but I definitely... I, I yeah. know the, the point that you're making. Well, I just like what equivalencies aren't false, though, at that point, too, right? Like, I, I'm just... I mean, right. analogy is how we communicate with each other. and And when it comes to language, like... Like all all philosophy happens within the context of language or within the confines of language, and and language is, um, I mean, another parallel would be like language to the sort of the the marketplace of the economy because the both are something that we agree on collectively over time, and both are constantly evolving, and so what what we're really discussing when it comes to cancel culture is authoritarianism because like it appears to be some sort of grassroots movement, but I mean, I guarantee you it's coming from authority down, like, you know, con consolidations of, of power, like these power structures get, you know, in Hollywood, like uh, most, most of our media comes from one source, right? Mm -hmm. And, and then we, we say that we have like social media, but really that's just all owned by media conglomerates again. So like all of our messaging is being curated and, and, and coming from the top down. So, it is language control. And I don't think that this is just some like spontaneous thing that came out, came up from the people. Like the grievance culture has a leverage point that is true, but the lever, the lever is very, very long. Like, yeah, slavery existed. It existed long before American slavery for one. Um, there's a bunch of moving parts in that. Like a lot of people contributed to it, including Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, no, and it's really shitty. <laughs> like, like, I don't think anybody, there aren't a lot of people that, that disagree with it being wrong. Um, those people have been pretty much pushed into like, and maybe, I don't know, maybe they should be the first people we listen to because then they're not having little meetings and in, in basements trying to like, you know, it'd be easier to convince somebody of a unethical, like to, to change an unethical position. If you talk to them about it, I don't think it's difficult. Um, but human history is the history of slavery. Like it's only until we we enslaved uh, machines that we even liberated ourselves from this yeah. idea. So like yeah, obviously there's a there's a deep trauma there, and it's being leveraged to uh, steer the course of society. And, and honestly, like the only reason for that is to to get money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's. Um, like a company putting a rainbow flag on their on their logo isn't any kind of support really it's just a it's just neoliberal capitalism 
it's just they're, they're just yeah like it's well we're selling we're selling ideas instead of products right so really it's about consumerism more than anything else like this is a simulacra or was it simulation or what's that book that Bukowski's based the matrix on i'm not sure i haven't read that. uh sim yeah anyway basically like we have this sort of virtual theory? no 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 um uh, essentially like like in a postmodern sort of economy or, or society, you end up with um, this sort of virtual experience. Uh, and then you end up moving towards a consumerism where you're buying like these sort of buttons that say what you are. Right. You know, like every product you buy, like Starbucks perfected this, right? With the $6 coffees and you check all these little boxes and it's, um, it's a synthetic uh, identity or it's a, it's a synthetic process of, of finding identity. Um, and so the only reason to, to limit what people can do in the sort of marketplace of ideas is to, to, to push them towards certain consumer products and, and, and power like that. Like, if that makes sense, my, mm. yeah, my reaching it. Okay. The, uh, that Starbucks point is very interesting because I think what they did, and I'm not sure if they knew what they were doing at the time but it's a really fun little psychological trick where you tell someone what they aren't and then they hold more heavily to what they are. And yep. by that they would purposefully, like they'll purposefully write your name wrong on a Starbucks cup mm -hmm. and then you're free advertising because then you're going to post that on social media or you show your friends or you show your family and say, Oh, look at how they spelt my name. This is how Starbucks spelled my name. And then they're in the conversation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, I don't know how much of that's planned so much as like, you know, kind of a Darwinian um, mm -hmm. process where things that work get used over and over by companies. So like the reason social media is addicting or addictive isn't because they planned it that way. It's because the stuff that was addictive was what was reproduced. Yeah. So that kind of behavior would have like the inception of that kind of behavior might have been maybe, maybe subconsciously they were trying to do that, but like it probably just happened a few times and now, and then people just start doing it yeah, because totally. it gets them, because it gets them attention. And that's the, um, that's the brilliance of this sort of like neoliberal social media based consumerism where, where the consumer is the advertising model. Mm -hmm. And we, we like, I mean, I think the Ghostbusters 2016, like hashtag I'm with her. Like, I'm like, I'm not sure what this movie has to do with the election. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, these are not things that we need to put together. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't really make sense. It's like, I can forgive like pride month and the, and the, you know, the flags or whatever. And I'm like, well, you're full of shit, but whatever, it's not harming me. But like when, when the movies I go to are a political statement, there's, serious problems because we basically told you in a in a very soft way what art you need to consume what messaging you need to agree with you know breaks the conversation down pretty fast